Okay, alright, let's look at this one. This is a good one. Alright, so a laminated wood beam on simple supports, right, pinned and roller, is built by gluing together four uh, two by four inch boards, actual dimensions, to form a solid four by eight. Alright, so you know it looks like only three, uh, you can see from the side, it's four <clears throat> two by fours glued together. Alright, the allowable shear stress in the glued joints is 65 psi. The allowable bending stress in the wood <clears throat> is 1800 psi. Uh, and so it's trying to find, if the beam's 9 feet long, what is the maximum or what is the allowable load, right, P right here, acting at one third <clears throat> along the beam. Uh, and we have to include the effect of the weight of the beam. We don't do that much. We'll, we'll talk about how to do that. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> this is like one of those failure problems. It says, hey, the shear stress, the um, VQ over IT can't get above 65 PSI, uh, but also the bending stress, the MY over I, can't get above um, uh, 1800 PSI. So what's the maximum P? So they tell us, you know, that this is 65 PSI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all this, um, set that to 65, and calculate the V, which gives me the P. <clears throat> um, and then uh, separately, I'm going to set that, the bending stress to 1800, set it to its maximum. <coughs> and that kind of could give me the M, the M will give me the P. Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about the weight. We don't usually include the weight. We want to include the effect of the beam's own weight, um, assuming that the wood weighs 35 pounds per foot cube. But actually, before we do that, <clears throat> I, I want, I'm going to uh, draw the shear uh, and moment diagram for this beam, right? <clears throat> I'm going to draw the shear moment diagram because that will show me, hey, wh where is the maximum V? Or where is the maximum M along here? Uh, because that's kind of where I need to test out my maximum. Make sure that the maximum <clears throat> doesn't occur, you know, but I've got to figure out which location <clears throat> it is occurring. So uh, for these problems where... You, you, it, it could occur anywhere on the whole beam. Uh, go, sh draw the shear and moment diagram so that you can see from that where the maximum <clears throat> shear force and the maximum moment is. Okay, so how do we include weight on a shear and moment diagram? Um, I like to include it as a distributed load. All right, I like to include it. <coughs> excuse me, as a distributed load right here. Um, if it's uniform, the weight is acting uniformly. It's not exactly a distributed load, but <clears throat> we can think of it as one. And so I take the weight and I just divide it by nine feet. And that is my distributed load. Does that make sense? Take the weight, divide it by nine feet, and that would be the uh, height right here of my, the intensity of my distributed load. They don't tell us the weight. They tell us it's this is almost like the density. It's the, the pound uh, force per feet cubed. So to get the weight, and, and look at the units. The units help us out. If it's 35 pounds per cubic foot, then how many cubic <coughs> feet do we have here? How many cubic feet? So what's the volume here of this? Well, the cross section... Uh, is 4 by 8. Uh, let me do change that to feet. The cross section is 4 by 8 and times 9. And so that would be feet, feet, feet. <clears throat> so that would cancel out. Yeah, and so I'd be left with pounds. All right, so the weight is 70 pounds. So this distributed load would be 70 by 9, or 7.77777 pounds per foot. And so that's what I'm going to say. Forget about the weight. What if I have a distributed load acting down? Weight is 
is, you know, down due to gravity, of 7.778 pounds per foot. Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, if we want to draw our um, shear moment diagram, we need to calculate this force right here. I'll call it AY, <coughs> AY <coughs> and that force right here, I'll, <coughs> I'll call it BY. Alright, um, now this is one of those problems where they don't tell you P, we, we, most of these problems we've been doing, they would tell us all the forces, we would draw the shear moment diagrams completely, and then we would calculate the stress, but this one they tell us the stress, <coughs> and they leave off this force P, this force P is what we're trying to find. So I would not try to do this backwards. I would do this forwards like we always do. Let's just leave that P in it. Remember all these problems we've, we've done similarly. We've done problems like this. I'm going to do statics, and I'm still going to have a P left in my <coughs> statics. Uh, so let's do that, see if I've got room. Now let me sum the forces in the y direction. AY and BY minus P and minus the distributed load. Uh, which, if I multiply the distributed load times 9 feet, I would get 70 uh, pounds equals 0. All right, so there's one equation. <clears throat> Let me sum the moments, uh, maybe about A. Sum the moments about A. I've got... Oh, A, Y goes straight through it, obviously. That's the reason I sum the moments about A. All right, <clears throat> force P is... Three feet away, creating a negative moment. That distributed load of 70, I can replace at the middle, 4.5 away, also creating a negative moment. Uh, but then this BY is acting 9 away, creating a positive moment. All right, so from this, I can write BY in terms of P, one third P plus 35. <clears throat> I can plug that in right here. Got one third P <clears throat> plus 35 minus <clears throat> 70 minus P. I would get AY of two thirds P plus 35. Okay, so it is okay if we have to um, to write this in terms of P. Leave that P in there. Okay, let's draw the V. Let's draw the shear diagram. The first thing that I encounter is a two-thirds P plus 35. So I'll go up, two-thirds P plus 35. So I'm not sure exactly where that is, but, you know, it's up there somewhere. Then that weight is pushing me down. That weight is pushing me down. How far does it push me down? <clears throat> By that much, you know, I could do 3 feet times 7.778, or I could say, well, it. I've encountered one-third of the weight, you know, 70 uh, divided by 3. Uh, it pushes me down by 23.333. Uh, so now I am at two-thirds plus 11.667. <clears throat> And then immediately I go down by P. Oh, sorry. I, I go down by P. Two-thirds P. And so now I'm at negative one-third P plus 11.667. Um, and then I go down even more. And I'm at negative one-third P, and I go down by uh, however much the rest of that would be, 7, 5, 40, you know, 46.667. <clears throat> so I'm down at negative one-third P minus 35. Oh, and actually, awesome. I mean, I kind of knew that I was going to be there. So then that brings me back, the BY brings me back up <clears throat> to zero. So there's my shear diagram. There's my shear diagram. Now, let's stop right here. Let's <coughs> calculate the um, 
maximum. Well, maybe, maybe we should keep going. Let's do let's do the moment uh, diagram. Okay, so the moment diagram. I start at zero right here. Uh, then I get uh, pushed up. This is a positive area. I get pushed up by that area right there, <clears throat> which I would say the this is a trapezoid. It has an average height of you know the average of those. So yeah, let's just do that. The average of two thirds p thirty five and two thirds p eleven point six six seven. I could probably just average the thirty five and eleven point six six seven. Uh, <clears throat> divided by 2 times 3 feet. <clears throat> A little bit of math. <clears throat> we can do this, though. Uh, 2P plus 70. 2P plus 70. Uh, and then it curves this way because V is the slope of M. Then <clears throat> I go down by this, and I bet and hope that... I <clears throat> the the area of that would also be uh, 2p plus 70. All right, so there's my shear and my moment diagram. Okay, now let's get to the heart of the problem. What's the maximum force P that we can use so that the shear stress doesn't get up to 65 and or the moment, the, the bending stress doesn't get up to 1,800 PSI? Let's separate those. Let's... let's um, do those separately. Let's, let's say, okay, what, what if the shear gets up to 65 PSI? Um, what would be the V? All right, so where is the maximum magnitude of the shear? Uh, well, either here or here. Now, I didn't really draw this very well because this is two-thirds P plus 35. This is one-third P plus 35, no matter what P is, <clears throat> the two-thirds P plus 35 is going to be the maximum. All right. <clears throat> All right, so sorry. This is VQ over IT. So where is the maximum V? It is over here <clears throat> at two-thirds P plus 35. All right, and where is the maximum Q? It's at the middle. It's at the middle. So I could, I could do a... Y bar prime, A prime at the middle. <clears throat> or I could say, all right, sorry here. I, I was kind of doing this the, the wrong way. I, I, I could keep on doing this VQ over IT. Um, but <clears throat> I forgot that the, uh, the previous problem we just showed uh, showed that I could just do 1.5 V over A to find the shear stress at the middle of a rectangular cross-section. <clears throat> so this would be 1.5, and th there's my V, over my area. Uh, do I want everything in inches? Uh, yes. This P is in pounds, so I think I'm good to go. So in inches, 4 inches, about 8 inches. And so that would be equal to, if I set 65 <clears throat> equal to this, I can solve for P. I would get P of 2,050 pounds. Now let me not box that in. Let me temporarily box it in. All right, so anyway, we get all, 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 all the way around the world to find that, <clears throat> that the maximum force that, would <clears throat> that I can withstand with the shear stress would be a P of 2050. All right, now, now let me check the maximum bending stress. Bending stress is <clears throat> my over i. And so if I don't want it to get up past 1,800 PSI, set that equal to m. What is the maximum m? 2p plus 70. Uh, <clears throat> what is the maximum y? <clears throat> Where is the maximum bending stress occurring? Very top or very bottom. All right, very top or very bottom. So the maximum Y would be 4 inches. 
and the I 112th base height cubed. And so from that, I would get a P of 3165 pounds. All right, so what is the maximum force that I can put at that one third right there location of the beam? <clears throat> a force of 2050 pounds. A force of 2050 pounds. But now let's let's look back at that. Let's take a step back. Don't count the vowels. You know, got to can't see the force for, for the trees. A problem like this, <clears throat> the idea of the problem is, hey, I don't know the P. What's the maximum force P that I can, that I can take? Go ahead and do it like we've been doing. Go ahead and, and do the statics. Go ahead and do the shear and moment diagram so that you can see the location of the P. Um, but then down here, <clears throat> we know the stress and we're trying to find the P. P is the only unknown right down here when we get our stress equation. For these maximums, you need to test both. You know, find the P that makes it fail due to shear stress. Find the P that makes it fail due to bending stress. So to, to find it where it fails, you got, you got to know where along the beam it fails. That's why the shear moment diagrams are helpful uh, because the shear would fail right over here at the very beginning on the left side. <clears throat> the moment, the bending stress would fail right here. But then also, the shear is a maximum at the middle, uh, bending maximum at the top and bottom. All right, and then find both of those P's the maximum P might be counterintuitive, would be actually be the smaller of the forces. Smaller of the forces. Uh, <clears throat> also be able to handle weight. So it's helpful to know the weight because you know you, you use the weight sometimes just completely. So don't don't forget what the weight was. So you can use that in statics. But um, I like to make weight a distributed load. So that's why this shear diagram. <clears throat> will go down linearly because of the uh, distributed load um, of the weight right there. Okay? Not too bad. A lot to take in. That was a good problem.